Hey YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage coming to you today on location at a friend's place here and we're taking a look at his 1956 station wagon. Hey Jerry here, he's going to talk about his car here and we're going to go do a walk around. It's a beautiful car, I've seen uh, progress now on it for about the last year and I just figured it's at the point we'll do a, a complete walk around, maybe we'll do a part two and go for test drives, things like that. Right now it's still a work in progress. Put it up on a lift and see underneath and all the beautiful workmanship that's been put into this thing. time painted a, uh, uh, a butternut yellow, had a single piece of chrome along the side to about here, a paint divider, and uh, we have uh, approaching the end of a two-year rebuild here. We took it right down to bare metal, took the frame down to uh, nothing, and then rebuilt it back up the way it should have been. We fixed a lot of errors previous owners had made, and we decided to dress it up as a Bel Air. Uh, Chevrolet didn't make the... Uh, um, Bel Air in this model. We had to fabricate some of the trim pieces like this one here. Um, some of the uh, chrome trim uh, which only came on the 210. Um, this came from New York State. This came from a friend of mine in Sherwood Park. The wheels were on the car when I bought it and uh, it's painted a uh, Ford yellow and a GM white. Okay, under the hood right uh, here's some of the changes we've uh, made. Uh, we went to a cross flow radiator. We had to make a few parts such as the uh, support here at the top. We moved the, smoothed out the firewall a little bit. Um, not completely because we wanted it to have a little bit of a stock look to it. We re-sculpted part of it around the air cleaner. It's a reproduction air cleaner of the Cadillac Oldsmobiles from the late 50s. Uh, we moved the battery box. We modified a 57 battery box and moved the battery down front, which means we had to move the air conditioning dryer out front. And then we had to put the overflow tank on the other side. Um, so one thing kind of led to another. That was added a few years ago. Um, um, we went with a pulley system there just to kind of keep it the old school look. Uh, I really debated going to a uh, single serpentine belt. In the end, I went with the pulley system. The engine is a uh, three to three stroker. It was built by DW Racing Engines out of Calgary, and uh, it's a strong engine. Um, I've taken this car on several road trips and it's totally the wrong engine for a road trip. It's high compression, burns premium, but when you have to merge into traffic, you have no problem doing so. Um, we've added the, the dual uh, uh, master cylinder there. We've added disc brakes on all four corners. And we kind of splurged a little bit and went with some uh, Eddy Motorsport billet hinges. I was going to ask about those. Yeah. Actually, I was very impressed with uh, Eddie Motorsport. When the, the hinges arrived, the two front pins there were bent because of a manufacturing defect. Um, when I phoned them up, um, they sent me the two pins and they sent me the full bracket because they said, well, we weren't sure if the bracket might have been bent too, so we thought we'd send that along too. So they really stood behind their products. And I was very impressed. Okay, so you got uh, CPP power steering unit in there? Uh, yeah, that came with the car, okay. and so we left that in there. The other upgrade we've done is we've uh, added a, a FI Tech uh, throttle body fuel injection. Oh, this is fuel injected, okay. Yeah. Does it have cruise control in it? Um, we've added a cruise control as well from uh, Rostra, that's on the fender right there. Cool, very nice. And then these headers, they're a Patriot, right? They're a Patriot three quarter length header. Um, I didn't want the real short ones on there but I didn't want ones that were dragging on the ground and the three quarter length seemed like a nice compromise. The tar top battery cover, that's just, a, it's not a real tar top battery. Yeah, it's just a cover that yeah. goes on, yeah. The years with this car, we've added a few things here. 
Um, the uh, interior panels are all out for upholstery. Um, we added power windows a few years ago, uh, namely because I was, uh, every time somebody would pull up to me on the passenger side and want to chat, I'd have to reach across and crank a window down. And, uh, uh, so you don't normally roll with the windows down because I noticed you have AC, right? Uh, we put the air conditioning uh, in there for our uh, Route 66 trip that we did in uh, 2016. And these are the original style uh, AC vents, uh, which we bought from Dan Chuck. Uh, we modified them a little bit on the inside. I didn't like the latch system they had for clamping them in there, so we modified it. So it, instead of using just a simple screw, it uses a machine screw. Um, the dash unit is an aftermarket one from uh, New Vintage USA. and. Uh, they don't make it anymore and I'm having a few issues with it, so I may be replacing that with something else. Uh, the radio is out. We're still putting the dash back together. Um, the vintage air, um, air conditioning system. Um, went with a low car eliminator throttle pedal so I could eliminate the linkage that was inside. Yeah, the hard linkage that yeah. goes in. Yeah. And uh, through one of our suppliers in the U.S., the company I work for, we supply insulation. Uh, I bought the rattle mat for the floor, which is like a dynamat. Um, that makes I see that even in the doors here. Yeah. I put dynamat in the full, uh, or the rattle mat in the full roof, so you don't get the tinny sound on the roof anymore. Um, I've added a second light pull in here at the back, uh, manually controlled for when we're camping, uh, a second uh, uh, overhead dome light. Uh, we took this car uh, down Route 66, so we took a week to drive to Chicago, two weeks to drive the route, and a week to come home up the coast. Uh, in 2017 and 2018, uh, we did the U.S. National Parks, uh, starting with Yellowstone, did about six parks in Utah, did a couple in Arizona. Uh, so we've done some extensive road trips in this car over the years, and uh, looking forward to another one. Well, that's great. One of the neat things about this car is a lot of the workmanship that you see here is, is just part of it underneath this car. Uh, and what's really a beauty about it is we're, we're going to have a lift here so we can get it on and see what's going on underneath. So Yeah, we'll pull her into the shop here. We'll do that. As I was talking about, underneath this uh, 56 is probably as nice or nicer than what's going on on top. So, Jerry, what do you want to talk about under here? What have you done? Well, um, the uh, uh, suspension, when I bought the car, had uh, Global West uh, components on there. Uh, we just took them down and painted them all. Uh, painted the shocks body color, painted the coil silver. Uh, same with the sway bar. Um, and that we added uh, uh, drilled and slotted rotors to the front, uh, two inch drop spindles, um, and some Willwood uh, two caliper. Uh, uh, you mean two caliper, piston calipers? Two, two, two piston calipers. Um, the uh, front panel under the cross member was all beat up on mine and it was to the point you couldn't restore it. Uh, so we cut a piece of 3 8 steel and just for fun, we cut a little bow tie in it. Um, coming back nice here, thick plate, yeah. We uh, um, replaced the plastic cover that came with the 700 R4 uh, with a metal one. And uh, over here, we did a little work. Um, this car originally had a floor shift, a low car floor shifter. I changed it to a column shift here. And we're having a little trouble converting the vertical motion of the column shift to a horizontal motion on the transmission. So we built this little mechanism here using some heim joints and some uh, custom-made bracket. Um, still got a little fine-tuning to do on there, but it works very smooth now and it converts the uh, motion of the, uh, the column shifter uh, to the horizontal motion on the transmission. Uh, we moved the uh, uh, proportioning valve uh, for the brakes down to the frame. And one thing we do with the frame is uh, from about here to here inside the frame at the front and the same at the back. We've, uh, we opened up the frame and uh, put some 1 8 inch uh, plating on both sides, plug welded it and resistance welded it. Um, and along the bottom, a friend of mine was doing his convertible 
and he put a piece of quarter inch steel just to reinforce it. We had some extra steel, we had the time, so we did it on this car as well. And then uh, we put some lifting pads just so we wouldn't scratch everything up. I also put some additional reinforcements in where we put the uh, transmission mounts. Um, moving to the back, everything is painted up here as well. We had to modify the fuel tank for an in-tank uh, pump to go with the fuel injection system. Just um, plugged off the original. We, we used unit. the original one just for the, the uh, fuel level sender. Yeah. Uh, the fuel is actually up in the top corner there. Um, we changed the uh, shock mounts. We went with a solid bar and a Mopar style mount. So if you ever have to change a shock, you don't have to fight with that pin that's above it. You just undo the bolt, pull it out, and put the new shock on. Uh, went with a uh, Hotchkiss, uh, or pardon me, Hellwig rear suspension. Initially, I bought a uh, Hotchkiss uh, sway bar for the back. They said it fits a wagon. Uh, well, it hits a wagon, but it also hits a gas tank when you go over a big bump. So we had to change the sway bar. So the sway bar kind of came up then? The uh, the other sway bar kind of came up higher yeah, and was, uh, had, was wider in the center section. Uh, Stainless steel fuel straps. Disc brakes in the back? Uh, and disc, disc brakes in the back from uh, right stop detailing. The nice thing about right stop is they use, this is a GM car, so they use GM parts. Uh, GM rotor, actually the rotor and caliper on this are off of, I think, a 92 Eldorado. And what kind of differential is it, 10 volt GM? Uh, this is out of a uh, uh, late model Camaro, and it's a 10 volt uh, 323 Posse. Very and nice. it came with the car. Okay. So for, uh, if you're doing road trips, it's got good highway legs. And it's got nice, like you welded these uh, brackets for the sway bar and For the like sway that. bar, rather than going with the U-bolts over top, we welded the brackets on so everything bolts on. Um, we've also extended the, uh, the extra work on the frame here. You can see a few holes here, that's for a trailer mount. And we've got plates inside with uh, threaded uh, uh, nuts on there. Just bolt it right up in so there. it bolts right in there and you're bolting into at least a half an inch of metal well a little bit overkill nice and solid for sure yeah this car is <laughs> shiny underneath is in up top that's for sure Everything's painted, all the panels are painted on the inside. Shiny now, but we'll see after a couple of road trips. Yeah, well you always get dirt and stuff up there, I'm sure. See everything? Another thing we did, Roy, is for the seat belt mounts, we made some plates and put a weld nut on it, uh, rather than the uh, big washer and nut. So when you're putting the seat belts in, you don't have to have someone underneath holding a wrench. But the transmission cooler, yep. we're, we're running out of real estate up front. Uh, with the way we had to rearrange everything. So this is a tube type uh, transmission cooler, but a two inch diameter tube, thins on it, uh, fluid goes down one side, up the other side, and when we made the brackets, uh, we took a few liberties and cut a couple bow ties into them as well, just to dress it up a bit. That's a 700R in this, right? 700R, yeah. Uh, who's a uh, Tranny Cross member is this, do you remember? Uh, this is one I bought from uh, Eckler's. Yeah. Initially, it had a different transmission cross member on here, and that's why the exhaust don't doesn't line, line up, up with, with the this, uh, yeah. uh, the uh, cutouts here. I have to modify that on the '57 I'm doing. I'm going to have to do something about that. For sure. And tell us what mufflers you're running, because uh, just people want to know if they like the sound of this car. You got these are. Um, these are uh, Dynamax. Dynamax two. It looks like. Okay, and then these are also mufflers, or are they just resonators? And these are just resonators. Okay. The exhaust system was done when I had the uh, old transmission cross member and uh, the Turbo 350 in there. Um, it was done by uh, Mike's Custom Exhaust out of Sherwood Park. Oh, okay. And of course, your headers are ceramic coated. Uh, they're ceramic coated from the factory. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mike, when you put the exhaust in, he actually raised up the mufflers a little bit just for a little extra clearance. So took a little extra time to do it. Um, now, they had the uh, 
The wheels are 26 inch diameter, same as uh, original equipment, but it's a 17 inch uh, Boyd Coddington wheel. Um, coming around the back here, you notice the name Nautomat. Uh, I actually saw that on another uh, uh, 210 wagon. And the reason I went with that is on our road trips, every time we're gassing up, inevitably some of hey, nice Nomad, because they see a two-door wagon. Well, it's not a Nomad. There's a lot of significant differences here. So we went with the name Nautomad. Um, but the uh, Nomad has a different slant to the rear window. Uh, it has a sliding rear glass here, whereas mine is fixed. Chrome uh, dividers here. Uh, Nomad has a hardtop style door. This is a uh, two-door post door. Um, and the Nomad roof has uh, ribs across the top. Inside, the Nomad has chrome bows for the headliner rather than the hidden bows in that. And the Nomad also has vertical ribs on the tailgate, which this doesn't have. Mm -hmm. right. So you've dressed this up sort of it because this body style of course never did come with this style of trim on it. They never made a Bel Air two-door wagon because the Bel Air two-door wagon was the Nomad. Was the Nomad. Jerry mentioned his friend's convertible on that. Well this is his friend's convertible and it's done to the same level of detail if not maybe even a little higher it's hard to say. Um, beautiful car so maybe we'll come and do a tour on this one but it's just a sneak peek of a uh, 57 Chevy convertible that's also in the shop here. Jerry, thank you so much for uh, showing us your beautiful 56 wagon here. And anything else you want to add? Yeah, thanks for your interest in it, Roy. Have a good week. Okay, well, take care. Well, if you like these videos, please subscribe, hit that like button, ring that bell for notifications, and have yourself a great day. And I'll see you next week. Mushroom Motor ZX tires, right? No, I'm just joking. Huh? I'm joking. <laughs> Well, those fuel injection systems are really good. They really duplicate the way a carbureted car starts.